Mac Mini. Here's my review. When I recently realized that I needed to replace my old MacBook Pro, I was in a bit of a puzzle. The current MacBook Pro lineup just doesn't seem to have what I need. You see, although I am a long time Apple user, I'm not a slave to Apple. So when I invest some money into a new Apple computer, I want this to be a long term investment. I really find the current MacBook Pro lineup, as well as the ones from the previous years, to be a sort of a trap. You see, unless you pour a lot of cash into your initial investment in a MacBook Pro, it will soon run out of storage space or memory. And let's not forget Apple experimenting with touch bar, butterfly keyboard, also using old generation processors. Honestly, MacBook Pros are not what they used to be. So with this in mind, I delayed the purchase of a new MacBook Pro as much as I could. My old MacBook Pro is still very much usable today, because it was upgradable, except for video editing. This is where it's showing its age. I explained in my previous videos how I made a decision to buy a Mac Mini, so here it is. And the first thing you can notice is that it's taken up way less space. 80% of the time when I used my old MacBook Pro was when it was connected to an external monitor, external keyboard and mouse. So this is a setup that I wanted to have at home. Mac Mini fits into that one way better than MacBook Pro does. Do I still have mobility? Yes, because I still have my old MacBook Pro. That 20% of how I use my Mac is still important. So if you need a Mac that you can take to Starbucks, Mac Mini is not the computer for you. But if you need a Mac that will sit on your desk at home and perform way better than MacBook Pro does and last longer, Mac Mini, here we come. I got a 6-core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage space. Why those specs? Simple. i5 is way faster than i3 and not that much more expensive, so this is a no-brainer. 256GB SSD should be enough for apps and basic stuff, but a bit more on that later. And 8 gigs of RAM is definitely not enough, but it's upgradable. I bought all these sets of screwdrivers and none of them can open my Mac Mini, so I still need to find one that can do it. I live in Thailand, so my options are kinda limited over here. I think I have found it, but it's gonna take some time. I'm using a 24-inch monitor. It's nothing special, nothing fancy. Mac Mini works with it very well. It's definitely capable of pulling so much more. If I need more screen real estate, I can use my 12.9 inch iPad Pro as a second monitor. But even though I can, I just never use it that way. As beautiful as Mac Mini is from the front, it comes with a lot of ports at the back. And you can see what I have connected. From the left, first is a power supply, then we come to the Ethernet port, which I'm not really using, then the first USB-C, is occupied by a dongle. It's a VGA adapter. This is how I connect my monitor. Next one is USB-C to lightning cable, which I use to connect my iPhones or iPads to transfer larger files from time to time. I cannot use HDMI port with my monitor as it doesn't support it, but if it did, that would come handy. I've connected my non-Apple mouse to an old-style USB, and underneath that I connect my sound system through the audio jack. I can also connect the microphone to it. Now regarding the internal storage, 256 gig is not enough, but it is enough for apps and for your workflow. You can see with everything installed on my Mac and with all the documents, still have 80 gigs of space. What I need to add over here is that there are two users on this Mac Mini. Other users, 30 gigs, that's actually my girlfriend occupying her space. And while we're on the subject of my girlfriend, let me just tell that she was totally against me buying a Mac Mini. She really wanted a new MacBook Pro. But once I got this Mac Mini, she changed her mind. She loves it. So how am I using my Mac Mini? Here are all the apps that I use. Let's start with the top row. For browsing, I use Safari and Chrome, and Chrome works very well on this computer. Even with 8 gigs of RAM, you can open multiple tabs, there's no lag whatsoever. I replaced the Mail app with Spark. I prefer to use native applications, but, but Apple's Mail keeps popping up, and this is such an annoying bug. I use Notes and Text Edit to quickly type some text. I don't use Calculator much. If I really need to calculate something quickly, I prefer to grab my iPhone, because of a numeric keyboard layout, of course. And this is one more advantage Mac Mini can have over a MacBook Pro. Numeric keypad. Sadly, I still have the basic Magic Keyboard by Apple, which does not have the numeric keypad. But first chance I have, I'll upgrade to the version that has it. The last app that you can see in the top row is Home. HomeKit works very well with Mac Mini. Now, I don't have many things connected to it, I only have a fan that we use when we are cooking, and the light that we turn on when we go to sleep. HomeKit works very well, I can use it either directly through the app, 
or through Siri. But one thing that would make it better, and it's such a no-brainer, why can't Mac Mini be used as a hub? You can use Apple TV or a HomePod and even an iPad if you want to keep it at home but not Mac Mini. That doesn't make much sense, that's such a huge oversight by Apple. I hope they fix it in the future. Moving on to the next row, you can see I have some social networking apps and I use Pages and Keynote to create documents. I use Playgrounds on iPad, not so much on Mac Mini. I install it anyway. I use Spotify a lot on all of my devices. Music plays an important part in my life and I guess I could use Siri on my Mac Mini, but I don't really know what to do with it. Sometimes I check the weather. I have enabled type to Siri option. I think it makes more sense to type to Siri than to say something. If I start talking to Siri, I trigger my iPhone, so typing makes more sense. The next row has my graphic design and video editing apps. They all work very well and very fast. Of course I would benefit from my external GPU, but that can be said for any computer. On its own, Mac Mini runs just fine for basic to more complex video editing that I do. The last row has some system apps and of course this all runs fine. Let's talk more about the speed. I've pulled some Geekbench scores from the web to compare the Mac Mini with a base model MacBook Pro. You can immediately see there's not much of a difference on a single core. But Mac Mini outperforms it on multi-core since it has two extra cores. Does it get hot? Yes it does, but fans are quiet so this is the best machine for a sound engineer or a music producer. Or a DJ. Best after the Mac Pro that is. But let's not mix apples and oranges. What about thermal throttling? For my workflow, even when running hot, it's minimal to non-existent. The same cannot be said for a MacBook Pro. So who would I recommend Mac Mini to? Honestly, anyone who is on a budget but still wants to have a Mac. If you want a stay-at-home computer that works very well, this is it. It supports really decent video editing. It's capable of so much more with a proper eGPU and memory and storage expansion. For gaming, I don't know anything about that. For music production, it's excellent. It's silent and fast. It needs memory expansion though. For programming, it's excellent because it allows for the peripherals of choice to be used. You can use any keyboard you want, any mouse you want, any monitor you want. It doesn't take up so much space on a desk. For photo editing, it works great. More memory would improve performance, but it works superbly right out of the box. For web browsing and internet, everything works as is, Chrome with multiple tabs, extensions, and so on. For office work, everything works as is. And with a USB to lightning cable, it works as a fast charging station for your iPhones and iPads. Let me know in the comments if you need more info on certain topics or apps related to Mac Mini. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. You know it's the right thing to do. See you next time.